Keyword research is crucial for content creation, but it can be pretty challenging, especially if you are a beginner. So I wanted to share my simple three-step keyword research method that I've developed over the years of practicing SEO. So let's get started. Okay, so I like to keep my keyword research process simple by following a three-step framework. So the first step is brainstorm, then we go into find and organize. So during the brainstorm phase, what I like to do is list out all of my seed keywords. So a seed keyword is essentially a keyword that describes your website or business. Now there are different types of seed keywords. There's the long tail keywords, and there's also keywords called head terms. So when you list out your seed keywords, focus on listing out the long tail ones. Long tail ones are the more descriptive ones, and they are usually three or more words long. And those head terms are those one word keywords like photography. Now let me show you what I mean. So this is the search results for photography. And if we are a photography business, we are a photographer, and maybe our goal is to teach people about photography, how to take photographs. So we might think that a good seed keyword is photography, but if we look at the search results here, we can see the local map pack of some photography businesses, we see the people also ask section, things to know about photography. And since photography is such a broad topic, we can see here, see results about photography and photograph. So Google is trying to help us narrow down what we are essentially wanting to know more about. Is it about the visual art form? Or maybe is it about taking photographs or finding a photography business near us? So the head term photography is pretty broad, right? There's also um, videos, there's a Yelp listing, so on and so forth. So we should go more narrow. So a more narrow keyword would be photography classes. Now here we do see an AI overview section that lists out a couple of um, schools that teach photography classes. There's one organic listing here from a school and the local map pack. People also ask, and there is this courses section from a couple of courses from Udemy and some additional organic listings right here and videos. Now photography classes is better than just photography, but we can go even more narrow, like say for example, photography classes Los Angeles. This is a great long tail keyword because it's three words or longer. It's descriptive of our business. And if we look at the search results here, Google knows exactly what type of website, what type of content to show us. Because if someone is searching for photography classes Los Angeles, they're looking for a, a school, a teacher in the city of Los Angeles to learn photography. So the intent is much more clear for this search term. So we see the local map pack and a list of organic listings right here. So this is a great uh, seed keyword. While photography is not that great, it's very broad. So after you list out your seed keywords, we will go into the second step, which is the find step. And we want to use your seed keywords to uncover new ones. Let's take our long tail keyword of photography classes Los Angeles. So we are going to use this long tail keyword, this seed keyword, to find additional uh, keywords that we, that we might not have thought about. So to find additional keywords, we will be using Keywords Everywhere. So this is a browser add-on that you can install for Chrome, Firefox, and Edge. So with the Keywords Everywhere browser add-on, you'll be able to see these widgets on the right-hand side. These list out uh, keywords, additional keywords that people also search for. We can also see a list of topical keywords, uh, SERP keywords. These keywords are the other keywords that these ranking web pages also rank for. And then the topical keywords are the topically relevant keywords that are associated with your search term. And we also see related keywords and long tail keywords. 
Now next to all of these keywords inside these widgets, we see the average monthly search volume, the average cost per click from Google Ads, the competition score from zero to one, and also the search volume over the past 12 months. And to find all of the long tail keywords, you can click on this button right here, find long tail keywords for Photography Classes Los Angeles. Now when you click on this button, Keywords Everywhere will show you a report that looks like this. So Keywords Everywhere found 42 keywords for our uh, seed keyword of Photography Classes Los Angeles. So now we can go through here and see what keywords are relevant for our website and for our business. And many of these will be great at creating content for our website. And for our example, you know, we are a photographer in Los Angeles. So maybe I just want to see the keywords that have Los Angeles in them. So I'm going to type in Los Angeles in the search box right over here. And then I'll only see the keywords that have Los Angeles in them. So Los Angeles photography classes, that's a good one. That has an average monthly search volume of 590. We can see the average cost per click the competition score, the search uh, volume over the past 12 months, and the trending percentage. So during this step, what I like to do is just star the ones that are relevant for me. So Los Angeles photography classes I think is pretty relevant. So I'm going to star this one. Photography lessons is also a good one. On camera acting classes, Los Angeles might be a good one as well. Photography workshops, beginner photography classes, Photography Classes Los Angeles for Beginners. So as we could see here, there are tons of amazing ideas that we can pull just from this single list. Even iPhone photography, street photography, there's even high school photography. So amazing ideas that we can use for our content. Now, another way we can find additional keywords is to take a look at what we are already ranking for. So let's just say this is our website. Okay, Sammy's Photo School, and we're doing keyword research for this website because we want to build additional blog articles, create content to drive traffic from Google search, from the internet to our website, right? So with the Keywords Everywhere browser add-on, on the top right-hand corner, you can click on this Keywords Everywhere icon. And while you are on the website, you can click on Organic Ranking Keywords for this URL or for the entire domain. So if I click on organic ranking keywords for this domain, Keywords Everywhere will give me a report that looks like this. And it shows me the top keywords for our domain. And there are a total of 28 keywords. And these keywords drive about 400 visits per month. So these are the keywords that the website ranks for. We can see the estimated traffic, the SERP position, also the average monthly search volume, so on and so forth. So this is another great list that we can analyze to see what we can try to optimize our site more for or maybe create new content around so we can rank higher. Like say for example, Photography Course Los Angeles. The website already ranks for this one. The search volume is pretty good. It's close to 600 per month on average and our SERP position is number 15. So that's about around the second page of Google. So this would be an excellent keyword that we can try to optimize our site more for or maybe create new content so that we can rank higher and we can be found easier online and we can maybe sell more of our photography courses. Now what's great about Keywords Everywhere is that whenever you star a, a keyword, you can go into your my favorite keywords list, which will show you all of the keywords that you've starred. So you can take a look at this short list and then take a look at the search volume, so on and so forth. And that takes us to our last step, which is to organize all of the keywords that we found in step two. This is where we take a look at our short list and we decide which ones we should try to focus on first to create content around. Now, I like to focus on three main things. I like to take a look at the search volume of the keywords that I've shortlisted. I like to take a look at the keyword difficulty. So how difficult it would be to rank for the keywords in my list and also take a look at the search intent. Okay, so that basically means what's the mindset of someone that is searching 
for that keyword? Are they looking to make a purchase? Are they looking to just learn more about that topic? So on and so forth. So it's important that you write content that fulfills the searcher intent. Now, Keywords Everywhere makes it very easy to take a look at search volume, right? Because you can take a look at the search volume column, and then we can sort by the highest or lowest. So these right here have close to 600 average monthly searches uh, per month. So maybe we can focus on creating content targeting these keywords first. But at the same time, you also want to take a look at the keyword difficulty and the intent. And we can check both of these with the help of AI. Let's take this long tail keyword for example, photography classes Los Angeles for beginners. Keywords Everywhere has an SEO report widget that can create various reports on this search term. You can get the user search intent for this keyword, analyze the content type, you can cluster all the keywords from the widgets on the right hand side. You can analyze titles, check rankability, and also suggest anchor text as well. Check rankability is one of my favorite reports here. So we can use ChatGPT, Claude, or Gemini to generate these reports. Now, before we generate uh, the check rankability report, you can also take a look at this widget right over here, the first widget. We can see the SEO difficulty for our search term. It's a 38 out of 100. Now for most websites, I like to target keywords that have an SEO difficulty of 50 or less. If it's higher than 50, it would be pretty difficult to rank for. So under 50 would be the sweet spot. You could see the off-page difficulty and also the on-page difficulty as well. Now these two scores help in making up the overall SEO difficulty score, okay? So photography classes Los Angeles for beginners would be a pretty good keyword that we can target for our website. Now let's take a look at the rankability report with ChatGPT. This is the SEO report here. So this report looks at the top web pages ranking in Google on the first page. It analyzes their on-page and off-page search engine optimization and gives you recommendations for how easy or difficult it is to rank for this search. So we can see here the SEO difficulty metrics, and it's pulled from this widget right here. And from all the data it analyzed in the search results pages, it provides us with SEO rankability recommendations. So the SEO difficulty analysis says, on-page difficulty is low and off-page difficulty is moderate. Focus on a better link building campaign to rank for this query. So it's telling you exactly what you need to do to rank for our query of photography classes Los Angeles for beginners. It even gives us a suggested page title and description, and it even tells us how to create our URL and the minimum domain authority and referring domains we would need. So when we organize our list, we would focus on keywords that have good amount of search volume and have low keyword difficulty. And then next, let's take a look at intent. So we can run an SEO report to get the user search intent for our search term. And it looks like this. So what this report does. So it looks at the top web pages ranking in Google and tries to figure out the user intent that each satisfies. It'll categorize the data in a table and it even gives us relevant keywords as well. So for this first table here, we can see all of these ranking web pages categorized as transactional. So they're looking to enroll in a beginner photography class in LA. And then this third ranking page is informational. And this page is about seeking beginner tips on how to get started in photography. And pages ranking six and seven are also informational. And it's about looking for class recommendations or discussions from the community. So ideally, your content should target one of the above user intents. So I would say for our keyword, the type of content would be more closely related to transactional because there are five pages that are transactional in nature. And ChatGPT also gives us some additional keywords that we can target that have that transactional search intent that we can take a look at as well. So we can organize and categorize all of our keywords by search volume, the keyword difficulty, and the search intent. So we can plan the content in a much more organized way. And this three-step keyword research process works for essentially 
any website. And I hope I broke this down in a simple way that even beginners can very quickly follow right from the start. So if you got some value out of this video, the only way you can let us know is by smashing that like button and also subscribe to our channel to get more of these types of videos. And if you want to watch a next one, feel free to click any of the ones on the screen. Thank you.